I had a career. I was a programmer. My, um, I was the child of some of the first programmers that there were uh, back in the 50s, uh, before computer science was a thing, had a name. Uh, and so, yes, I was immersed in computing uh, as a very exciting thing f from the point of view of my parents. And then I got excited about electronics, so I built things. I built, um, I built things to control my model railway. And then uh, uh, when I, as later on, I built a computer terminal because I wanted to, because I, um, I could, and because uh, partly I got thrown off using the computer at the university. Uh, I, um, I, I, uh, I used it inappropriately, so I had to, so the, <laughs> the urge to have your own, your own machine becomes very, very great. So I built my own computer. And so, uh, in a way, when you have a computer, then you look at doing everything with it. Later on, so I think I was a that generation was an amazing generation to be part of because just when you're uh, at in elementary school, you can make things with magnets and with wire and, and and nails, and then as you get as you come through high school, suddenly transistors are available. They're, they become cheap enough for a kid to buy, and then as you start building things, things with transistors, which get a bit complicated, and you realize that you know how to build a computer, the microprocessor comes out just at the point where I'm getting to university. So I can buy a microprocessor chip, two inch long chip, my 6800 chip if you're interested, put it into and build my own computer. So I sort of rode the way of discovering uh, computers as something which you could actually have in your house and you could use to solve all kinds of pro uh, problems. And, and I've worked at various companies and I worked as a consultant. And so I used to, uh, and so I'd come across things like communication pro protocols. I'd come across things like uh, uh, when you program a printer, how to make it make uh, graphics and screen. And, and so I'd come, uh, come across sort of text processing. And so basically uh, life, as a sort of jobbing uh, contract programmer, had taken me, in fact, through all kinds of things. I ended up with all kinds of bits of uh, knowledge, which in the end would be useful. And so then when I get to CERN, it's just frustrating. When, you know, when you, one, of the things, one of the reasons why you should get your kids to teach your kids to code is that well, then they can look at a computer and realize that it can be different, realize that they can program it to be different. And so I'm at CERN, and all the systems that are incompatible and I, you know, I, if I'm sitting on one computer system, I can't get information on the other one. I have to log on into it separately and I have to learn a completely different program to get at the help system or the documentation system. And at CERN, because CERN's a great place to invent the web because lots and lots of different documentation systems came from all over the world. So there's a lot of frustration, I, personal frustration for me, uh, uh, and an idea also that I wanted to have really good collaborative tools for my, uh, the people I was working with. And so after, then when, when you realize, you know, it could be simpler. And the web is really basically a very, very simple idea, a very simple 